Hey everyone, this is Kamix, and I'm finally going to record the answers for the Q&A video. This, uh, this video is going to be a bit long, so sit back and relax, because there's going to be a lot of questions that are going to be answered. First of all, before I begin answering all these questions, I gotta say, a lot of your questions were very interesting, and seemed to be very fun to actually answer, so I thank you guys so much for that, you know, for actually caring to get to know me better and, you know, wanting to know more about me. That really means a lot to me. So anyway, uh, no more delays. I'm going to answer these questions. So uh, a few people have asked me whether or not I play instruments in real life. And I do know how to play the guitar. I do know how to play the piano. I do know how to play the clarinet and saxophone. I've learned these four instruments. I wouldn't say I've mastered them. However, I do know, like, if, if you could give me one of those instruments, I'll be able to play something out for you. So a couple of people have asked me about my plans for the future, and to put it short, I don't have any plans for the future. I'll go wherever life takes me, basically. There were also many people who asked me what were my inspirations and who, basically, who or what made me start making music digitally. And I would say it's Poker Remix Studio and Cat333 Pokemon. All the way back in 2008, they've made remixes. I mean, Cat333 Pokemon made Mario Paint remixes, while Poker Remix Studio, we all know who he is, right? So anyway, um, they both inspired me with their amazing creations, and I wanted to learn how to do something like that. So I went and searched and tried to find out ways to make music digitally, and finally, in spring of 2011, I was able to figure it out. So, uh, Salakine, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, is asking me about college and if it's worth it to study music. Well, as cliche as it sounds, if you're ready to put in the work to study and practice and have nothing else but college, then you can go for it, of course. But if you're a person who doesn't feel like they're that into music, like they don't really want to put in the many hours it takes to try to practice and get good, it may not be worth it. Me, personally, I'm starting to feel like it's not exactly worth it for my case because, well, I just don't really like the competitive vibe in music. I don't like that people turn it in something subjective into a competition, but that's only my opinion. I will still, you know, try my best and go through with it, but if I fall behind, it's not going to be the end of the world for me. So Noctives asks, what are some suggestions you would give to aspiring remixers and also which plugins and sound packs would you recommend? and also how's living in Florida. If there's one thing I see a lot of remixers do, and producers in general, is that they kind of end up being ashamed of how they produce their music. But the problem is, there will always be pretentious assholes out there that will say that your production methods are inferior and that theirs is better and blah blah blah, all this and that. But if the music you make sounds good to you and to your audience, then it shouldn't exactly matter how you do it. Of course, everyone has room for improvement, just don't be ashamed of how you do things. I usually use Harmer or Harmless and Vengeance sound packs, but for people who are starting out, I would recommend something like Nexus 2 or Silent because they have a bunch of pre-made sounds that you can use because obviously not everyone's gonna know how to create their own synths and that's okay. Also, living in Florida, is good as long as you have air conditioning. Um, I didn't for the first maybe year and a half of living here and it was brutal, especially in the summer. As long as you have air conditioning, you're good. It's, it's a pretty nice place here, if you can get past all the terrible news stories that come out of here. <laughs> Quite a few people had a bunch of questions regarding my future plans for my channel and such, and I guess to make it all in one easy answer, I don't really plan things. I like when it comes to remixing, it's kind of like a random song comes to mind, it gets stuck in my head and I'm like, "Holy crap, I really want to remix this." So that's usually how my mindset goes. So I have no plans at all. A few people have asked me what my favorite remix of my own would be, and I would say Hopes and Dreams 2 or Sonic Generations Planet Wisp or Sonic Colors, whatever. Um I those two were probably the songs that I've been most proud with, actually. And uh, Anonymous had a couple of other questions, which said, What remix was the hardest to make? And I would say any dubstep track that I've made is probably the hardest. It takes a lot of thought to put into sound design and also mix them together because a lot of dubstep has a lot of distortion in it. And it can be a pain to mix it so it won't hurt your ears when you listen at high volumes. Also, my favorite song usually kind of cycles between different songs as I go along. Currently, though, it's Gula by Deadmau5. It's like 
the most amazing fucking song I've ever heard currently. The reason why I grouped these two questions together is because conveniently, my favorite track of all time in Pokemon is also in Sun and Moon. So that would be Guzma. And personally, I feel like the music in Sun and Moon is pretty good. I wouldn't say I've remembered most of the tracks, except for maybe the battle themes. Which basically means I kind of find most of the soundtrack pretty forgettable. So the Asian Prophet himself has asked me a couple of questions, actually, and um, one of them has been answered, so I'll just answer the other ones that haven't been answered. Alright, so, ever had a remix where you couldn't figure out the notes to use, so you decided to give up on it? Many. I... Even though I've created about 200 or so remixes in my lifetime on YouTube, there are maybe about 400 or so projects that haven't been finished. So that kind of puts it into perspective how much I actually um, do this kind of stuff in a day. Like, I'm almost constantly on FL Studio trying to come up with new ideas and stuff. And I would say that I don't think I've had any regrets doing YouTube whatsoever. I mean, I'm pretty happy with where I am and how much I'm growing and how much uh, things are pretty much just coming together now. Also, thanks for the congratulations. You've also been a really awesome friend. I kind of wish we could do more things together, but you know, time zones and all that jazz and whatever. X and I used to be really close. We used to do like everything together. Problem is though, uh, life happened. We both got really busy and we don't really have much of a chance to speak to each other anymore. So Brett Turner, a person that has been supporting me a lot lately. I mean, I honestly thank you for all of your support, dude. I, I really can't thank you enough. But anyway, um, if an attempt is not going well and you give up on it, do you ever return to it later on? I have done that before. Um, one remix that I can remember off the top of my head that I've done that with is uh, Dark Cave from Gold, Silver, and Crystal. That remix was actually a really old project that I came back to later on. Um, Hidden talents or hobbies, uh, I actually really like building things, like, um, building my PC was actually extremely fun, and I do have a lot of fun upgrading it every now and then. If there's anything that I would like to get into, uh, given the free time, would be to learn how to draw better, because, uh, drawing has been, like, a secondary hobby that I have, you know, secondary to music, of course, and I do really like to draw, but I'm just not that great, but I'd love to have more time to practice. Rooks and Reshiram, another person that has been supporting me for quite a while, says, What motivates you to keep remixing? Is it just something you love to do, or is there something else? And he also asks a very interesting question on how I met most of my friends. What motivates me to keep remixing is, well, just my love for video game music in general, and also all the people that have supported me throughout the years. Also, to answer your second question, this might be a little long-winded, so uh, sit back, and let's just try to get through this. So, the way I met Calber was, he used to frequent my streams back in late 2014, early 2015. He kind of had his eye on me for quite a while, and, um, actually, the way we became friends was, um, I once decided to have a Cards Against Humanity session with fans. So, I was like, alright guys, get your asses on Skype, we're gonna play some Cards Against Humanity together, and it was kind of like a hectic voice chat with maybe like five or six people, and... I think it handled pretty well, but basically, um, I had one of my high school friends in the call with me, and, you know, all the other fans and such, and he, we, we kind of started doing some video calling. Calber seemed a very sheepish and timid person, he decided to gather the bravery to show his face. So my high school friend decided to say, you look like someone that we would find on chat roulette. And I'm not gonna lie, that really pissed me the fuck off, so I actually told him off in front of everyone else. So, I then started to talk to him afterwards, I started to talk to Calber afterwards, because it was like, that was so uncalled for, I wanted to apologize for that. And after a while, we just became friends, we became really close. So the way I met Retro was actually someone named Mega Espion who introduced us, he gave Retro a link to my server on Discord last year, and we kind of started to talk because when I saw that Retro, like someone who's pretty big into the Pokemon remixing community, he came in and, you know, actually started becoming active in my server, so I PM'd him and I was like, oh, thank you for joining, that was really cool to see you here and everything. And then afterwards, we started to talk more and more and realized how much we had in common, and we ended up becoming really great friends. I mean, we still are, of course. 
When I met Arya, it was about maybe late April or something, because I realized she has been following my Undertale stuff for quite a while, and I saw that she had her own Discord server. So Calibur Retro and I decided to go to her Discord server and try to talk to her and, you know, get to know her better because she's also a content creator. So we thought it would be pretty cool to meet another person who is into Undertale as much as we were. So we went into her server and we kind of tried to talk a little bit. It started off a little awkward, but then when we started to talk about YouTube and how things are going for all of us, we basically just clicked. I mean, like, we realized how much we had in common with this YouTube stuff because we all are part of the same fandom and we make content for the same fandom, so we kind of know how it goes, and it's nice to talk to people who we can relate to about that kind of stuff. By the way, I'm going in chronological order of when I met everyone, so that's why it's in this particular order. Um, lastly, but of course not least, how I met Shara. Shara and I were both part of Team Switch, which was basically a development team that wanted to create a game based on Underswap, which is in Undertale AU. She saw that I was also part of the team and decided to message me out of nowhere about... I don't even remember what it was about, but we kind of started talking quite a bit. Towards the end of June, the beginning of July, she decided to message me again, and it was about 5 in the morning, and I was just about to go to sleep. Like, I, I was basically dead fucking tired, but I... She decided to message me, and I was like, hold up! I'm gonna have to stay up. We ended up talking about Overwatch and how much we're both pretty much obsessed with it. And so I sheepishly asked her if she wanted to play a bit. Even though I was like dead tired, I still wanted to push myself to play because it's like, I don't know when I would have another chance to hang out with her again. And then I decided to turn on voice chat. Uh, I remember I was sounding so fucking nervous the whole time trying to talk to her because I didn't exactly know her. I didn't exactly know what were the right things to say and whatsoever it was kind of scary for me and the worst part is she didn't even have a mic but i didn't know that so all i knew was that she was very quiet after everything i said and i was so goddamn scared <laughs> but then you know after a couple hours um i basically crashed on my bed and i told caliber retro and aria you know the experience i've had with her and how how much fun it was to play overwatch with her and they were all like bring her into the goddamn group and so everyone was, like, putting pressure on me to invite her into the Discord group, and, well, long story short, she joined us and we played Overwatch, f like, throughout the entire fucking summer. So Andrew asks, how long did it take for you to get good with FL? Did you use any music programs before it? And, um, I wouldn't exactly know what you mean by how long did it take me to get good? I mean, it took me about six years to get to where I am now, if that's the question that you're asking. And also, the only music programs I've used before FL uh, would be GarageBand and Mario Paint, but I've never actually got into music production until I started with FL. So Trenton asks, how long did it take for you to develop your style? And I feel like I've only had this style that I have now about this year, maybe even last year as well, but it does change every year as I learn more as a producer and grow more as well. And I feel like that happens with every musician and artist out there. It constantly changes. Some girl from Germany asks, are you friends with some of the other popular remixers out there? I would say I'm acquainted with quite a lot of the community, but I, I just don't seem to have the guts to actually approach many people. So I, I guess I wouldn't say I'm friends with a lot of them, but I do know them-ish. Um, Lunalva asks, why did you choose Kamix as your YouTube name or nickname? And the reason why I chose Kamix as that name is because, well, it's a Japanese name for Blastoise, and I do like Turtles. I mean, I my favorite character from Super Mario is Bowser, and I do like Blastoise a lot as well. So that's why I chose Kamix as my name. Funny enough, Blastoise is not really my favorite Pokemon. It actually, uh, my favorite Pokemon now is Decidueye. After years of basically using this name, it's kind of become a second name to me at this point, so I'm probably sticking with this name anyway. So Elephantum asks, Setupvid, I'm assuming you have a PC because, you know, editing and music and stuff, maybe go into your PC parts, and you know what, I'd like to do a setup video, maybe soonish, why not, because it does seem pretty interesting, and if you guys are interested in the gear that I work on, then I'll definitely do one. So Idris asks, what do you think of Pokemon Sun and Moon? Hint, it's great. And to be honest, I agree with you. It's one of the best Pokemon games in terms of story that I've ever played. Uh, the soundtrack, most of it's pretty forgettable. I've probably said that already in the past. 
But yeah, the game was pretty damn good. So Kydrix asks, hey man, huge congrats on the 50k. Uh, it really makes me happy to see you growing like this, and uh, I thank you for that, by the way. As for a question, what is the most important thing you've learned in 2016? And to be quite honest with you, it's uh, whenever you get something that's pretty threatening, like a, an encounter that kind of just throws you off a bit, take a step back, think about it for a second, and then make your next move. That's something I had to learn. So Dark Atlas asks, can we expect more tutorials? And yeah, you can. The only problem is I kind of had a bit of a bad experience with my first tutorial where a lot of people kind of attacked me for not displaying the professional way, you know, a bunch of entitled EDM artists that think they know better than everyone else. So I just got to learn to cope with that and then I'll be more confident on making more tutorials. I apologize for that. So Daniel asks, how did you manage to survive Brooklyn? Growing up in New York is like hell. And uh, to be quite honest with you, all I did was stay out of everyone's way. I didn't start shit. I just kind of, you know, I was as nice as everyone as I could, like, as I possibly could be. And, you know, everyone kind of just was neutral with me. I did only live in Brooklyn from when I was born up to when I was 10 years old. So I doubt I really had to face that many problems as a kid. But, uh, yeah, I was basically just cool to everyone and they were cool right back. So Nutsack Sandwich, epic name by the way, asks... Are you ever going to finish that Cyrus remix you made for April Fool's 2015? I have no plans for that, actually. I'm just going to come clean with you guys. I have no plans finishing that Cyrus remix. And if anything, I'll probably just start over if I really want to make a Cyrus remix. Because that's pretty old, and I know I could do a lot better. Porygon Z asks, is Kamek's dead? I see you using Ace as your profile pick, so does that mean a name change is coming soon? And I feel like Kamek's was a is pretty much a second name for me and I, I think I've answered this before where I said I'm gonna stick with this name as much as I can because well I, I it, it really is like a second name to me now but um I, I don't think I'd want to change my name anytime soon but the fact that I did use ace as a character was because someone made a really cool icon for me and um I do want to use it because it, it, I feel like it represents me better you know Book Reader says, keep on keeping on, man. You deserve every sub. And thank you, by the way. Um, as for the question, favorite and least favorite Overwatch hero? Oh, boy. This is going to start some shit. All right, so my favorite is Reaper. I love how in your face he is, how you basically can, you know, be very close to a person and whittle them down until they're pretty much done. It's kind of my playstyle, Ramboing shit and getting up in people's faces. And my least favorite, uh, hmm, probably Winston. I mean, I don't know. To me, Winston's character in general seems very boring. I mean, he's boring to play. Uh, his backstory isn't exactly very interesting in my opinion. But, I mean, I can respect him as a character. I'm not going to say throw him into the fucking trash. But, I don't know. He doesn't stand out to me as much as the rest. So, uh, Lobita Para asks, What are the requirements to do a collab with you? And this is just out of curiosity. Well, basically, um, I only tend to collab with people who are very close friends of mine because I did have a bit of an issue in the very beginning around the time I had maybe about 2,000 subscribers where people tried to take advantage of me and I felt like nowadays it would be on a much grander scale so I basically just try to stick with those I really trust and those that I feel like wouldn't really do such a thing to me. No offense to anyone, of course, but, you know, I, I just, it's really just to be cautious. So Amela asks, what is your favorite food and why is it pizza? Luckily, pizza actually is my favorite food, and, well, I just fucking love Italian food. I feel like I'm just about to end it off here, actually. I've answered 27 questions, and I know I've gotten about 140 that were all really good, to be honest with you. So, I apologize so much to those who I didn't get to, but if you still want me to answer your question, please do not hesitate to ask it again in the comments. I will try my best to reply to any of those who really want their question answered. I honestly feel really bad that my fear of making a video that exceeds anyone's capacity to watch is what's holding me back to interact with you guys more. This is kind of why I have live streams to, you know, talk to you guys and everything person to person. So if you really, you know, if you want to talk to me and everything, you can join my Discord, you can, you know, go into my live streams. There are many ways to reach me. Even in comment sections and videos, you got any questions, I will try my best to answer them. So I sincerely apologize to those I haven't gotten to and if you really wanted me to answer your question. However, um, thank you for sitting through this. I mean, I know it's a very long video and it's much longer than what I usually do. So I thank you very much for actually 
sitting through uh, me talking for about 20 minutes. So, yeah, um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for 50,000 subs, and actually 55,000 now, because, holy shit, I didn't get that much of a chance to make this video because of how much background noise is in my house, so I apologize for that, but thank you so much.